Oh, YouTube. As you can tell by the video before, this uh, shuts off the power to this Ender 3 Pro after the end of a print. It raises the uh, print head and then lets the fan run until the hot end is cooled to 40 degrees Celsius. Then the print head moves over and the bed moves out as usual to present the print and then it shuts off the power. The power is controlled by a micro switch which is wired in series with the usual switch on the side of the power supply unit. So this switch turns on the power and then the wire from that switch is interrupted by this switch and comes back to the power supply unit. So you have two switches in series. They both need to be on for the machine to function. With this switch not being contacted, connected the way it is, I have a wire to the normally closed circuit and a wire to the common circuit or common connection. And when, the, uh, when something hits the blade, and breaks the contact, it shuts off the power. And that happens when the uh, print is presented. So you can see underneath the screws on the carriage holding the rollers. One is the usual button head right here. And the one behind it has been replaced with a five millimeter th by 35 millimeter socket head cap screw, which sticks down about four more millimeters because there's a couple of washers underneath it. So once the print is presented, this screw hits the micro switch and it turns off the power. Until you come back, find your print, the power will stay off. You can either turn the power off here or leave the bed here to keep the power turned off. But if you push the bed back, the power will come back on. Now it's simply wired. There's an 18 gauge, two conductor lamp cord connected to the micro switch. This one is a new one that hasn't been bent for the task as this one has. You can see the blade is bent. Now, the, this is just a mock-up. This isn't a complete connection, and these crimp-on connectors are just hot glued. I didn't want to destroy them. And you can solder them on or crimp them on. You can cover them with heat shrink tubing to uh, cover the con conductors a, a little more. If you're worried about electricity being a an issue, I designed this little cover that can be downloaded along with the mount base. This right here can be uh, downloaded from Thingiverse. So um, basically you just make the, the connections like this, make them complete. This is just pushed on a little bit. And then you go to the switch output wire on the power control power supply unit. The top one, which is black here, is normally red that's been pulled off and uh, used in a different way the way I've got it set up. But the simplest way to do it is to just pull that wire off. It's got a connector like this holding the blade on, this female connector. You just pull that off and you put this in that connector. Put the blade into the female connector. You can cover it with heat shrink tubing if you like. And then push this b connector, the female, onto the blade that is exposed when the wire is pulled. So that basically puts this wire and the switch in the circuit that goes from this switch to the power supply unit. So it is just two switches in a wire. And this 18 gauge wire is the same gauge that's used by the uh, power cord that supplies power to this machine. So it's not going to be uh, an issue with heat or uh, anything like that. The uh, wire is 
18 gauge, which is good up to 10 amps. And as you can see here, this is a 4 amp machine at 115 volts. This switch, as you can see right here, 15 amps at 125 volts. So there's no safety issue unless there's bad manufacturing. Now you can either, you can connect this and let it run as usual. And when the print completes, the bed will move out, present the print, shut off the power, but the hot end will still be a couple hundred degrees Celsius. And there's no telling what that might do. Might allow heat to go through the, um, the uh, um, cooling fins and perhaps mess something up. So I thought it would be better to allow the fan to cool the unit off before it shut down. So in the uh, description, I have links to every part used. Um, I had most of them in my junk drawers already, but in case you don't, there's a way to find every one of them. And the G code I changed is uh, in the description as well. And it, uh, it's pretty simple. Basically, all it does is raise the head at the end of the print. The Z direction moves up about 20 millimeters and then it sits and cools. And then when it's over, it moves all the way over to the stop and the bed extends all the way out and it shuts off the power. So uh, it's quite functional. I have had no problems with it. And all you'd have to do is adjust the bend of your blade so that it misses the front screw and it contacts the rear screw. And make sure the bend is after the button that it pushes, not before. And uh, the hardest part about this was replacing the screw. I was replacing the springs on the, the bed leveling uh, screws anyway, so uh, I took it all the way off. If you can figure out a way to take off that nut and the adjuster nut inside without taking it uh, taking the bed off, more power to you. So, uh, but that's the hardest part right there. The screw I used, this one, was left over from the uh, assembly parts for my printer. So uh, it was too long, I just shortened it. But it, it would be just about 35 millimeters. I've got two washers between the head and the roller inner race to extend this even further, but if, you're, if you have a little more finesse bending the blade, that wouldn't be necessary, but it would protrude farther up and closer to the bed. So that's a judgment call on your part. So uh, hopefully this has been an informative video and uh, the uh, um, G-code I got from another video, but it didn't, didn't function for me. So I rearranged it and now it does. And um, so uh, hopefully you like it and uh, get some use out of it. All right, good luck, bye-bye.